Okay, but let's move on now. The American insurer Liberty Mutual had tied up with Videocon for the insurance business in India. Videocon has now sold its stake to a JV of Enam and the DP Jindal Group. Liberty Mutual's chairman David Long is in India and joins us now. Primarily with his view on a whole host of issues, U.S. seals, global financial markets, etc. Uh, Mr. Long, good morning. Your partner in India, Videocon, just sold out. Uh, can you tell us if you're comfortable with your new partners, Enam and the DP Jindal Group? Yeah, so uh, we've uh, been in business here for five years now, and um, you know, as you say, we just had a change of partner. I think uh, we're pretty happy with. Um, with the new partners that we found, uh, both are highly respected. Uh, we feel pretty good about the fact that we are now the uh, largest shareholder in the new partnership. Uh, that makes us feel good. And uh, we were very happy that we have two well-respected and financially secure partners and uh, that, that we still have uh, management control as we move forward. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Long, uh, you know, given the nature of things, uh, we are more interested in the global markets and your business obviously will require you to keep an eye on bond yields. Uh, do you think uh, the yield of 3% on the U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury, even if we revisit it, can destabilize equity markets? Jordan's professional, um, you know, having interest rates with a little bit room to a little bit of room to maneuver is not a bad thing. So, of course, when when interest rates grow, go up a little bit, we'll we'll feel the pain in terms of unrealized uh, losses on capital. Uh, but for the most part, investments um, on a go-forward basis, it gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility to ensure uh, to invest in. Um, in bonds which have a little bit more income coming in, um, not too dissimilar to banks, which is if, if you have a little spread, there's more opportunity, uh, more opportunity for you to make a little bit more money. So I don't view interest rates as destabilizing. I think they've been uh, at an all-time low for a long time, and, and to, to have them be at three percent doesn't bother me at all. What about growth? Do you think the U.S. growth engine can fire even if yields went all the way to 3.25 percent? I think you know growth in the U.S. versus growth in India are two very different things, right? So, um, I, you know, we we sort of still see growth in the U.S. in the low single digits, two to three percent. I don't think interest rates creeping up to three percent is going to impact that at all. Uh, I think there's a lot of money flowing into equity markets still. Um, three and a half percent isn't that, or three percent isn't that attractive for for investors. Um, so I don't think it's going to have a huge impact in terms of where money flows. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact in terms of growth uh, in, in India. Um, when we when we take a look at opportunities here, uh, we see only uh, possibly acceleration of growth, which is why we think it's such an attractive market. So, I don't anticipate interest rates in the U.S. going much further than the three percent that they're at. Um, I don't think it's going to be a continuous hike. I think where we are today is probably a pretty good indication of what you're going to see for the next uh, at least 12 to 24 months. Oh. Okay, that's good to hear because there were some people who were even uh, guiding for 3.25. So, 3 is very much uh, what you think it will be. So, therefore, do you think a global growth of close to 4% looks possible now for this year? We sort of look at it market by market because we're, we're in different markets. So in North America, we'd, we would anticipate growth in the 2 to 3 percent range. We think Western Europe's uh, going to be less than that. We look at uh, uh, Latin America and we think it's more in the 5 to 6 percent range. And then in India, high single digits and, and uh, China may be a little slower than that. So when we're, when we're looking at growth opportunities, it's still really Latin America and, and Asia that we see are much more attractive from, from a growth perspective than the U.S. Commodities have had a big run. Do you see them rising some more? Uh, I mean, crude at $80 and base metals, can they rise about 10 to 15 percent this year? You know, I, I'd sort of separate them. I, I think uh, we do a fair amount of energy investing, and I think the issue with, with crude is that the technology has advanced so much that once, uh, once prices start getting to, to 75 and 80 and 85, I think there's an awful lot of, uh, there's an awful lot of properties that can start to be drilling again. And there's an awful lot of capacity that can come online pretty quickly and uh, pretty, pretty uh, cost effectively. And so I think, you know, I think oil sort of in the, in the 65 to 75 range is probably a reasonable estimate. If it starts getting 
higher than that, I think you'll see more people uh, go online and start drilling again, which will sort of force those prices down. So I, I think that, that on the upper end of what we've seen in a little while, um, I don't anticipate them going much higher. I think if they do, then there's an awful lot of folks out there who will hop in and start producing oil. Um, you know, we have properties and that, would, that we uh, invest in that would, would do just that. Uh, metals are a little tricky, and it, you know, I don't want to get into the detail of metal by metal and country by country, but uh, you know, commodities are pretty volatile, and uh, you know, you, you just have to be prepared to, to live with that volatility. Again, um, you know, I, I don't see uh, continued rise in, in most commodities either. Okay, you, you spoke about high single digits uh, growth in India and uh, uh, you know this is it's music to our ears that you think uh, you know crude is at its highest point possibly won't go above $75 much uh, but there is still the election factor that can uh, stimmy growth in India. How do you assess uh, Indian growth uh, in the near term for this year and the next? Yeah, well, I talked a little bit about the crude prices. Um, there's always going to be politics. Uh, I don't think they're going to get in the way of, of sort of the natural momentum that this economy has. In fact, I sort of, I, I kind of feel the opposite, which is we talked about high single digits. I think when you look at the population here and, and when you look at how young it is and, and how many jobs you're going to have to provide, I think that uh, you might need to even push the acceleration button a little harder. Um, you know, so, so to see India in the 8, 9, 10 percent uh, growth range wouldn't surprise me at all. I don't think, I don't think politics is going to derail that at all. Um, I'm actually here with my chief investment officer. We're, we're taking a look at other opportunities outside of insurance. So we're, we're pretty bullish on this country at the moment. We're bullish in terms of providing capital in the insurance space and we're pretty bullish in terms of looking for other investments. So uh, we actually see this market as a, as a bright spot. Okay, the market is a bright spot. On that optimistic note, we will end this discussion. David Long, thanks as always for joining us. We'll take a short break on that note. Up next.